Dorothy Irene Height March 24, 1912 to April 20, 2010, was an American administrator and educator who worked as a civil rights and women's rights activist, specifically focused on the issues of African American women, including unemployment, illiteracy, and voter awareness. She was the president of the National Council of Negro Women for 40 years and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1994 and the Congressional Gold Medal in 2004. Early life Dorothy Height was born in Richmond, Virginia. When she was five years old, she moved with her family to Rankin, Pennsylvania, a steel town in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, where she graduated from Rankin High School in 1929. In Rankin, she attended racially integrated schools. In high school, Height showed great talent as an orator. While in high school, Heights became socially and politically active, by participating in anti-lynching campaigns. While progressing in her skills as an orator, it took her to national oratory competition. Heights won the event, and in return she was awarded a college scholarship. Height received a scholarship from the Elks, which helped her to attend college. She was admitted to Barnard College in 1929, but upon arrival was denied entrance because the school had an unwritten policy of admitting only two black students per year. She enrolled instead at New York University, earning an undergraduate degree in 1932 and a master's degree in educational psychology the following year. She pursued further postgraduate work at Columbia University and the New York School of Social Work the predecessor of the Columbia University School of Social Work. Career Once graduating Heights took on various jobs serving poor communities around New York City. Although it was a dark time in the Depression era, Heights' skills were much in demand. Heights started working as a caseworker with the New York City Welfare Department, and at the age of 25, she began a career as a civil rights activist, joining the National Council of Negro Women. She fought for equal rights for both African Americans and women. In 1944 she joined the national staff of the YWCA. She was also an active member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, throughout her life, developing leadership training programs and ecumenical education programs. She was initiated at Roe Chapter at Columbia University. She served as national president of the sorority from 1947 to 1956. In 1957, Height was named president of the National Council of Negro Women, a position she held until 1997. During the 1960s civil rights movement, she organized Wednesdays in Mississippi, which brought together black and white women from the North and South to create a dialogue of understanding. Height was also a founding member of the Council for United Civil Rights Leadership. In his autobiography, civil rights leader James Farmer described Height as one of the big six of the civil rights movement, but noted that her role was frequently ignored by the press due to sexism. American leaders regularly took her counsel, including First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Height encouraged President Dwight D. Eisenhower to desegregate schools and President Lyndon B. Johnson to appoint African American women to positions in government. In the mid-1960s, she wrote a column called, A Woman's Word, for the weekly African-American newspaper The New York Amsterdam News. Height served on a number of committees, including as a consultant on African affairs to the Secretary of State, the President's Committee on the Employment of the Handicapped, and the President's Committee on the Status of Women. In 1974, she was named to the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research, which published the Belmont Report a response to the infamous Tuskegee Syphilis Study, and an international ethical touchstone for researchers to this day. <laughs> Later life In 1990, Height, along with 15 other African Americans, formed the African American Women for Reproductive Freedom. Height was recognized by Barnard for her achievements as an honorary alumna during the college's commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Brown v. Board of Education decision in 2004. The musical stage play If This Hat Could Talk, based on her memoirs Open Wide the Freedom Gates, debuted in 2005. The work showcases her unique perspective on the civil rights movement and details many of the behind-the-scenes figures and mentors who shaped her life, including Mary McLeod Bethune and Eleanor Roosevelt. 
Height was the chairperson of the Executive Committee of the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, the largest civil rights for women's rights organization in the USA. She was an honored guest at the inauguration of President Barack Obama on January 20, 2009, and was seated on the stage. She attended the National Black Family Reunion that was celebrated on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., every year until her death in 2010. Personal life and death According to a family history DNA analysis performed by African Ancestry Inc., Height's maternal line has a root among the Temne people of modern-day Sierra Leone. Dorothy Height was never married and never had children. On March 25, 2010, Height was admitted to Howard University Hospital in Washington, D.C. for unspecified reasons. She died six weeks later, on April 20, 2010, at the age of 98. Her funeral service at the Washington National Cathedral on April 29, 2010 was attended by President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama, as well as many other dignitaries and notable people. She was later buried at Fort Lincoln Cemetery in Colmar Manor, Maryland. Topic awards and honors Candace Award for Distinguished Service, National Coalition of 100 Black Women 1986, Presidential Citizens Medal 1989, Spingarn Medal from the NAACP 1993, Franklin Delano Roosevelt Freedom from Want Award 1993, Inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame 1993, Presidential Medal of Freedom 1994-7th Annual Heinz Award Chairman's Medal 2001, National Jefferson Award for Greatest Public Service Benefiting the Disadvantaged 2001 listed on Malefi Keita Asante's list of 100 Greatest African Americans 2002 Congressional Gold Medal by President George W. Bush on behalf of the United States Congress approved 2003, awarded 2004 one of the 34 honors on the Extra Mile Memorial in Washington, D.C. 2005-2009 Foremother's Lifetime Achievement Award from the NRC for Women and Families upon her death, President Barack Obama Obama ordered flags to be flown at half-mast on April 29, 2010 in her honor. On May 21, 2010, a callbox was dedicated to Height. It is located on 7th Street, SW, in front of the last building in which she lived. On March 24, 2014, in celebration of the 102nd anniversary of her birthday, Google featured a doodle with a portrait of Ms. Height above protesters marching with signs. November 2016, honored with a 2017 United States postage stamp, the 40th stamp in the Black Heritage Forever series. The painting of Height is based on a 2009 photograph shot by Latif Mangum, I want to be remembered as someone who used herself and anything she could touch to work for justice and freedom. I want to be remembered as one who tried. Dorothy Height. <laughs>